If you've got an APS-C camera and are still using the kit lens, then the 18 to 50 mm f 2.8 lens from Sigma is the next lens you need. In this video, we're going to look at the lens, its build quality, features and performance, as well as a lot of example photos and videos. So, as you can probably guess, the lens has a zoom range of 18 to 50 millimeters, which is a full frame equivalent zoom range of 27 to 75 millimeters. And there's a constant maximum aperture of f 2.8, which is fairly wide. It has a minimum focusing distance of just 12.1 centimeters and weighs just 290 grams. And at 61.6 by 76.5 millimeters, it's a fairly small lens and it has a filter thread size of 55 millimeters. If you enjoy seeing lens and camera reviews like this, I've got lots more videos like this on my channel. So please consider subscribing and dropping a like on the video. So the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeters is an autofocus lens, but it doesn't have lens stabilization built in, which is a downside. Also, it is not a power zoom lens, meaning that it can only, the zoom can only be controlled by twisting the barrel like this, and not with in-camera controls, which you get on almost all cameras. So the lens costs around $500-430 pounds. That's a, roughly how much I bought it for. So clearly not the cheapest, but for the zoom range and the wide aperture in an autofocus lens, it is comparable with other lenses on the market, if not better, especially as it is in this very small size. Other lenses like this would probably be a lot bigger. So let's see what you get in the box of this lens. You get the standard documentation, and then pretty much just the lens, which is secured in cardboard and a plastic bag as well as the petal-shaped lens hood. Fairly straightforward packaging, pretty small box, pretty small lens. So you can see the lens details are written here on the front, and for the size of the lens, the glass element is fairly large. On the back of the lens is the electronic connections for the autofocus, as yes, this is an autofocus lens, with the lens details written in grey just on the front of the lens, which you could, might just about be able to see here, as well as them being written on the side, which we mentioned before. The barrel extends from the front when zooming in all the way up to 50 millimetres, and then back in again, back down to 80 millimetres. Both the focus and the zoom rings move very smoothly, I would say, and very easily without much resistance. So I guess there's definitely a chance that you would knock these by accident while you're using them, but it still feels very premium. The zoom ring you're probably less likely to knock than the focus ring if you're using that. So for a size example of a lens that it is similar in size to, if not similar in zoom range, is the 55 to 210 millimeter lens from Sony. When that's not extended, the fully extended, the 18 to 50, is similar in length and size. And here's a quick look at the Sony a6000 with the Sigma 18 to 50 connected to it. It fits pretty well. The black finish matches the look of the a6000 quite nicely. The lens body itself is made from metal, but with the zoom and focus rings made of rubberized plastic. I think, in fact, I think the focus ring is just plastic and the zoom ring is rubber. The barrel is plastic, as is the lens hood and the, re and the rear lens cap. So I took this little Sigma lens away with me on holiday, and it was the only lens that I took with me. I wanted to test not only as an all-round lens, but as part of a small, lightweight setup. So I was using just the Sony ZV E10 camera and just, yes, the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter millimeter lens. I didn't take any others with me and I was really happy with the performance. So here now are some example photos and videos that I took whilst I was away just with this lens. None of these photos or videos have been edited or colour corrected so they are exactly as they came out of the camera. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
My impressions are, image quality is sharp, especially in well-lit situations, and the fairly wide aperture means that low-light photography and video, whilst not looking perfect, will look much better than the performance than you would expect from, say, the 16-50mm to 50 millimeter Sony kit lens, which comes with most Sony APS-C cameras. The lack of in-lens stabilisation, of course, is a shame. That is something that the kit lens does have especially if you're using a camera that doesn't have in-body stabilization, it means that your videos will look very shaky. It also would have been nice if the lens had a power zoom feature. Rather than having to twist the barrel manually, which I've shown you, it'd be nice if you could control that from within the camera or by using a remote control. So overall, the Sigma 18 to 50 mm f2.8 is a great all-rounder. It has a solid zoom range, making it suitable for many types of shot, and the wide maximum aperture of f2.8 means that it's a great performer in low light if you want professional out-of-focus looking backgrounds, but you don't want to be restricted to just one focal length. And I would say, especially if you are looking for an upgrade to the Sony 16-50mm to millimeter kit lens, which I've mentioned a couple of times, this lens would be the obvious choice. If we have a very little look at these side by side, you can see that the Sigma is considerably bigger than the Sony kit lens, but in all other features, it is pretty comparable. Of course, the zoom range of the kit lens is 16 to 50 millimeters, whereas the Sigma is 18 to 50 millimeters. So almost the same, but doesn't go quite as wide. But where it really makes up for that is that wide maximum aperture of f2.8 all the way up to 50 millimeters it is exactly the same aperture, maximum aperture all the way, which means even zoomed in at 50 millimeters, you'll get that same out of focus looking backgrounds and the same low light performance. Whereas comparably, the kit lens has a maximum aperture of f3.5 to 5.6 at 50 millimeters, which is really dark and will and really doesn't perform very well in low light. Also, a little look at the lens hood, which I didn't show before. Of course, it does add a little bit of size to the lens, and that is also made out of plastic. So what do you think of this lens? Let me know in the comments below if it's one you are likely to pick up. And if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. But until next time, see ya.